welcome to Hot Intros, guys. If you each take a turn, look into each in camera, give an intro who you are, what you do, why you're awesome. <laughs> then you start. Hey guys, I'm Harrison, uh, RVP of sales at Activio. Um, I'm awesome because I'm comfortable with my skin and I'm a pretty goofy guy and I like to make people smile. <laughs> awesome. Hey guys, um, I'm Uzual Batar, the CTO and co-founder at Recap.io. We're awesome because we're trying to help you close deals. I'm awesome because I don't know. I'm down for whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here, right? Yeah. All right. So the first one here on the left, not the right, just to make sure you do it right, is the warm intro. This one's not cool. bad. This is a good one. No okay. worries. Not bad. Nice yeah. sweet one to get you started. That's good. Yeah. All right. First question is pretty easy, but should sales and marketing teams, if they could only focus on one, top of funnel or bottom of funnel, 100% focus on one, which one should they do and why? <laughs> I feel like we're gonna have very different answers to this. <laughs> I would say personally top of funnel, just because I feel like in today's time, like, you know, go to market automation is just becoming a more and more relevant topic. And um, I just think there's so many tools out there that, you know, are leveraging AI, generative AI to just help automate the process specifically in that category. But I definitely see value in bottom of the funnel too. So it's it's not like a it's not a definitive answer, but that's where I would go with. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Well, kind of. It's a hard <laughs> question to answer because you yeah. need both. It's also like a very unrealistic yeah. scenario. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. When we focus on the bottom of the funnel, and I think that right now it's very important to think about the bottom of the funnel because leads are really hard to come by, right? If you're not maximizing every lead and every opportunity that comes in, you're literally leaving money on the table. It's or leaky bucket. You keep pouring water in, but it's not going Exactly. And if these are so hard to come by, you need to be able to run a refined process and work with your buyers to make sure you're delivering value and close the deal. So, and if you ask yourself, like, how much have you really invested in the bottom of the funnel? Most people don't think about that part. And so right now I think it's it's time to really think about that. Wing number two, the cayenne cold call. <laughs> also not that bad, don't worry. <laughs> I'm eating these on an empty stone, so. <laughs> I'm eating it on a stomach of only wings. <laughs> so might as well be an empty stomach. I have a rock in my stomach right now. You know, I've seen ways where, especially with those type of wings, they're called the flats, right? Mm -hmm. Where people like put them in their mouth and like they take both bones yeah. out. And you, so I, I tried it once. It was a total disaster. It's like sauce spraying. Out yeah, no, it didn't. It didn't work at all. Yeah. I ruined a good shirt. <laughs> all right, question number two. Heading into 2024, what do you think is the most underrated pipeline generation tactic that people should be considering? I wouldn't say it's underrated, but I think you have to iterate fast, right? So everything that's everything is changing right now in terms of terms of generating pipeline. And as soon as you figure something out or you see something that's hot, people are jumping on it. And if it's getting yeah. saturated, you got to move quickly. I think the most underrated thing is things like this. actually connecting with people and having conversations and building that relationship. Yeah. Everyone is so focused on scale that they like forget about the one-on-one, -on -one, the one-on-two, -on the small scale stuff, which also like, also like, you know, I think it's like, this will scale more than the scale thing, right? Because this video will be shared and then it's like, but like starting with this small piece. Yeah. I don't think there's one right answer. I mean, you obviously need the whole omni-channel approach, but... And maybe this sounds a bit old school, but I think like one lost art for a lot of companies is straight up cold call. You know, especially for that top of funnel. I think that I think a big part of that is it's time consuming, low connect rates, especially in today's time. But you know, there's a lot of good automation tools out there that can automate the cold calling process, get reps more conversations faster. And I just think that at least in my experience, I've always seen the highest conversion rates from calling, having a real conversation with someone as opposed to an email, LinkedIn connection, but do you think it's worth that call connection? It's worth all the burnt bridges to get that call connection. Like if you call a hundred people and you piss 90 off to get 10 call meetings, is it worth pissing off those 90 with your cold calls to get the ones you do get on a meeting? Yeah, that, that's a totally fair question. But realistically, <laughs> if you cold call a hundred people, 90 aren't going to answer. <laughs> you well, okay, get like five like, but realistically, <laughs> people will answer and get mad at you. Yeah, I mean, I think that happen. you just, I mean, you need to be strategic about it. Like, have your pre-call research ready, you know, have a relevant reason why you're calling someone and, you know, hopefully they hear you out. It's obviously a risk and yeah. a lot of people hate doing it, but I've always seen in the past, I used to manage an SDR team and we had our best results when, you know, we were actually calling people. That's fair. Yeah. All right, wing number three, this is funny, the SDR teamers. There we go. So, <laughs> speaking of cold calling and SDR teams. I haven't really noticed like an increase in heat. Right now, this one a little bit in the back, you'll feel as you talk more, but it's very subtle. We gotta be easy win. We're not gonna <laughs> go like straight for the straight for the kill out of the game, right? Um, all right, question number three here. Lots of people argue about like what SDR should focus on learning more: the raw skills of like cold calling or understanding the product and the customers. Ooh, Where question. should they focus first? 
learning the skill, le learning the product. A hundred percent. I mean, I know that I just said cold calling is like the big thing. But if you thing don't that, know what you're selling. No, if you don't know what you're selling yeah. and you're just blindly spraying and praying people, that is when you're going to piss people off, like yeah. you said. you got to understand the product. you got to understand the workflow so that when you call people, you can really not only pitch the value, but understand someone's pain. Like, why do they need this? You know, how can they use the platform instead of me just trying to call and book anything possible? I would have to kind of disagree there. I think that... That's the point. <laughs> I think that SDRs are so early in their careers that using the product, especially in sales where they're likely to be able to use the product, that they might get into a habit of feature selling instead of actually selling the value or trying to understand the pain point. Their whole job is to book a meeting and give good intel to the AE and pass that deal along. So if you have a PLG approach, yeah, absolutely become, you know, maybe handle some trials or people that come in. But it's more about focusing on the skills of how, to, how do you get people to give you information and, and relay that information to you and solve the problem, like understand what their pains are. And realistically, right? Like they should be doing yeah. both. Yeah. Oh, for like, sure. Yeah, yeah, they definitely like, should be doing It's sort of a sidebar question. Which one do you think most sales and enabling teams fail on? Is it understanding Ooh. the product and the ISP or is it the raw skills of selling? It's probably an even split. You know, I've seen- um, Sales and enabling in general just fails? <laughs> no, no, no. I just, so meant, so like, no, some people have no, had that I mean, taste, like, some huh? sales enablement <laughs> leaders will are really focused on one, and some are focused on the other. And I'll bet it's a pretty even split. It would be my best guess. Yeah, I would say so too. I think it's more that, especially now the way that things are in the market, they probably focus more on how much is converting, how much revenue is coming in, versus making time to or investing time into like the It'll coaching. Be a little too short term. Short term. Short -term yeah. Everyone's desperate. Yeah. To that corner. Oh, it's tough right now. All right, wing number four. The ghost in pepper. It does ramp up a little bit here. All right. This is when you'll right. feel like <laughs> like in 30 seconds you go to answer a question, you'll feel in the back of your head, you're like, there it is. I already yeah, it's, it's gonna take over for sure. Yeah. Alright. What's the biggest mistake you see sales teams making right now? You can start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get a little bit of sweat coming out there. Starting to feel I'm it. glad I took off my sweater for this. I don't know. <laughs> I need to <laughs> Gotta keep the brand you got worth to. the comfort, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a mistake the sales teams make right now. Maybe it is. The times have definitely changed. There's more decision makers, more stakeholders on the deal. The sales cycles are much longer. Yeah. Running your same sales plays or playbooks that you ran a year ago, six months ago, are just not working. The still are being like learning and always tweaking and being yeah. on top of it. And yeah. you have to do things, you have to spend time with your customer or your buyer, right? And if you're trying to get these quick wins, it's just not happening today. You have to spend time with them, you have to understand the pain point. And sales teams in general are just not equipped to do that. Like younger or less experienced salespeople are being required to run more refined processes. They just don't have the training or equipment. I completely agree with you. I think that, you know, a couple, I have a couple answers to this. So one is, Obviously, you mentioned getting this is tough, man. <laughs> getting all the right, you know, decision makers and stakeholders. And I think that one thing I've noticed, especially in the last year, is that the CFOs have become the new CROs. You know, like a CFO is the ultimate person who's going to have to sign off on this. And so, you know, you can think, hey, the CRO is the decision maker. But if you don't have a good business case to present to a CFO, it doesn't matter how much the CRO wants it. They can shut it down. And then on the other side of that is, I think it's easy, especially for younger reps to get like super excited about a deal that they have, especially for bigger ones where they kind of forget to think about the risk and in any way possible, like what could possibly go wrong here? Who do I not have involved in the process? They focus too much on like that, the lay of the top, oh, it's easy deal, I'm gonna yeah, get it, like, oh, I'm gonna get it. Got a, like, got a, I've got a great champion, yeah. I've got access to the EV, super duper, this yeah. is a slam dunk. It's like, okay, well, yeah. What could go wrong? That worked. And then how now, can I get ahead of it? You how just like charge towards the end goal. Now you have to kind of yeah. like really. Well, people had, especially when people yeah. had money to spend. Yeah. You know, now, now that's You're not really every dollar. You yeah, get. absolutely. All right, how you feeling? I, I'm okay. A little, a little spicy, right? Yeah. All right, fifth one here is the lost lead. Almost as painful as losing that seven figure deal. <laughs> so, if you've been there, that one tastes better than the fourth one, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one has more of like a long-term burn to it. Yeah, for sure. All right. Besides your own tools, obviously, <laughs> what is an underrated sales tool or marketing tool that you think people don't really know about yet? On the other side, what is an overrated tool that you don't quite understand why people keep singing its praises? Oh, that's hot. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said <laughs> the hardest. I want to answer this quick, but I think an underrated tool, and this goes back to, you know, maybe I'm biased because I just think cold calling is a really important aspect of yeah. PG. Um, but there's a tool out there called Forum um, AI, parallel dialing technology, sales floors, helps reps make a hundred calls in like an hour, but more importantly, they can talk to way more people in a day, increase their skills on the phone, book more pipeline, save them time. I think that's a pretty underrated tool. You have an underrated tool? He thinks about the overrated tool? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really have an underrated tool per se, but I do think, again, is that um, not focusing on the bottom of the funnel, not focusing on the customers or customer success is an underrated process. So maybe like the category of category. Success. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the product side. I'm not super familiar with the tools that we're using, right? So, but I think that entire aspect is extremely integrated. And, um, well, I guess I do have one. Um, championing or full marketing with people or meeting people that might be in similar spaces and, and working with them to do this kind of content. Like, because we share similar ideals. And this, I think, is extremely named already. This is a brilliant idea. <laughs> All right, overrated tool. And then you're done. Um... Oh, man. My nose is looking a little, little yeah. vamp. <laughs> I mean, okay, this is a hot take, but um, what we're for. I think outreach is a bit overrated, to be totally honest with you. Your spam cannon? I've used it a bunch, and, like, it has value, but I think there's a lot of tools that compete with it that do just as much as it, if not better, for less cost. And, you know, nowadays, CRM tools like HubSpot, they have their own sequencing capability. Why would you not just have that all in one package? I know outreach can do a bit more, but that's the general trend, right? Is right. Consolidation yeah. tools. It's a special purpose to us. Yeah. I think I'd have to agree. The cop out answer. Well, <laughs> the cop out answer for me would really be the CRM, right? The CRM I, in general. The yeah. CRM in general is that like CRMs are great and you need it for your business, but it is a it is a database. It is not somewhere that you can generate revenue. It is not contributing. To closing deals, it's it's a it's, just, it's a system of record, and so overrated for me would be note it's a it's a note it's a structured note taking. Yeah, and I'm sure everyone we integrate with the CR and make sure yeah. it's updated. But we're still not live there, right? Your deals happen with the customers with the buyer, and like so, CRM is the cop out answer, but like I, that's what I have to go with. All right, you did it. You made it through all five wings. You guys both ate the most of anyone so far. You have that bad. We cleaned them. Nice. Which I can feel I ate more because you guys ate more. <laughs> it hits worse when you eat more. So <laughs> thanks for joining. Thanks so much, man. Before we end, we want to look at that camera and say either your last hot tip or something cool you're working on. And then same for you into that camera. Don't be afraid to fail. Take chances, you know, and um, see what happens. Failing is always a learning experience. I find, especially in sales, too many people are scared of failing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think that everyone will at some point in their life and it's just a matter of learning from it. So don't be afraid to take a big swing. And if you fail, you know, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, I love that. Um, I would have to agree with that 100%. I would also say I'm the CTO. I'm on the engineering side, product side. Work across the departments and understand what challenges other people in your company are facing and everybody else is doing. So you have a holistic picture of your customers and of what your company is trying to achieve. So, Iterate fast, fail fast, but also have a deep understanding and empathy for everybody else in your company as you put this. Awesome. You guys did it. Thank you. Thanks so much, man. It's nice right. meeting you. We're out. <laughs>